12 steps to a better memory. Fast and easy techniques proven to help you. Step 2. Recognizing the keys to a better memory. One of the best known examples of a person with a remarkable memory was a Russian newspaper reporter named Zerembrunsky, who was a patient uh, of a great Russian neuropsychologist, Alexander uh, Ruria. In 1968, Ruria wrote about Zerembrunsky, uh, whom he called simply S, in the mind of a demonist. Uh, S appeared to have been born with a memory that seemed limitless. If Ruria asked S to call the list that he had given S many years ago, she would first recall that at the time Ruria had been wearing a gray shirt, then she would recall the list. He could describe any sense in his mind I perfectly because he said he could see the person before him in almost hallucinatory detail. It was clear that as he went about the task of memorizing differently from most people, if given a series of numbers, he said he could see the figures in his mind. This is why he didn't care Here, whether he could ask to remember, uh, remember numbers in front to back or vice versa. His incredible memory did not make for an uh, idyllic life. However, in fact, his life lacked one important feature because S relied on factual memory. He was unable to generalize. He couldn't see the forest. He could only count the trees. This is because generalized memory is really the result of an imperfect memory for a fact, which S didn't have. He also had a problem with memory chunks, which means that he, he was unable to recognize others if they changed subtly, such as by wearing a new suit or getting a haircut. If someone showed up who had shaved off a beard instead of commenting, Oh, you've shaved off your beard, as was likely to ask, Oh, have we met? Most of we were not born with as unusual memory skills. This doesn't mean that we've fated to drift through life in a hedge with a absent-mindedness. However, it's possible to improve your memory for just about every area of your life. What you need to do is learn to use the three keys to be to a better memory, pay attention, associate, and visualize. Key 1. Pay attention. Simply noticing Pay attention. Paying attention is the most important thing you can to do to improve your memory. Paying attention involves deciding which things are worth remembering and which can be discarded and forgotten. As a generation of students have discovered, no matter how well the material is presented, if you were lost in a daydream when you first had it, you probably won't remember much of the information later. A lack of attention is also the reason why most people immediately forget a name when first introduced. They are so busy looking at the new person making initial judgment and trying to make a pleasant conversation, they never really hear the name at all. If something catches your interest, you will pay attention. If you are not interested, you just won't have the motivation to concentrate. For most people, paying attention is a conscious effort, not a, relax, not a reflex. Fortunately, even the most 
Die hard, daydream m e r s can learn to improve their ability to pay attention by working at it. In the same way, you can to learn to improve anything else. It's impossible to really pay attention to anything if you are tense, if you are tense, nervous, or under stress. The first thing to do if you want to improve your ability to pay attention is relax. Take a few moments to breathe deeply, which is consciously relaxing the muscle in the back of your neck and shoulders. This is why this is where a great deal of tension resides. Whether you are trying to add something to your memory or recall something already in your memory, your desire to be successful will affect your performance. It's important to be calm and believe that you can remember. If you started the idea that it's just too hard to learn something, you are going to have difficulty remembering it later. And if you are convinced that you have a terrible memory, you are putting yourself at a disadvantage. When it comes to remembering, it's essential to tell yourself that you can remember before you go on to record information. Everything we perceive is colored by our senses and our emotions. The resulting perceptions are then organized by our reasoning and tucked away in memory. Anyone can absent mindedly observe. If you all really want to remember, you must focus, stay, observation, and concentrate. And you are concentrating on something, first ask yourself whether or not you like it. And then ask yourself what it is t h a t you like or don't like. This elaboration is crucial. since you will not remember when you have neglected to elaborate one. When you are really observing and concentrating, you will note expression, composition, color, and mood. Understand that attention is fragile. No matter how fine your memory or how Powerfully, you can focus your attention. The fact remains that the main common denominator in a discussion of attention is its inherent fragility. The average attention span of, the, of an audience is only 20 minutes, which is why all good speakers know that they must convey the most important part of their message up front. if they are to have an impact on their listeners. Good speakers know that after the first 20 minutes, they will need to employ strategy to hold attention, natural poses, variation in speed and pitch, good anecdotes, funny stories, or interesting activity. Don't drive your attention. Don't divide your attention. Attention can be measured in two ways. How well we avoid distraction and how well we can sustain concentration over a period of time. While humans are usually good at directing their attention to one source, there is evidence that information that isn't attended to is still being analyzed. For example, in the Cocktail party effect. A person who is concentrating on one conversation at a party will likely notice, will likely notice if a nearby conversation suddenly switches to the same topic. It's possible for a woman to do more than one thing at a time. You can eat dinner and watch TV and talk and drive a car. It seems that as long as the task don't depend on the same mental processes, both can be handled at the same time. But if two tasks depend on the same type of mental process, such as listening to a story and reading a book, neither can be accomplished.
appreciate very well. This uh, capacity of being able to pay attention to more than one thing at a time varies from one person to the next and can be affected by alertness, age, and motivation. Moreover, even if you could judge five or six activities at once, it would be impossible to remember much of anything while you are doing it. The best way to remember a fact, an event, or a phase is to focus on the information during learning. Avoid distractions. Anticipate your distraction before you occur. Think ahead about what's likely to distract you. Remember that one older you get, the harder it is to handle interference. If you have problem concentrating in the workplace, you will want to eliminate anything that will interfere with your concentrating photos, books, or music, for example. Try using an answering machine to screen photo phone calls so you won't be tempted to lose track of what you are doing while you are on the phone. Many drugs that cause drowsiness, sleeping pills, alcohol, etc. also affect attention and memory. A person's uh, circadian a person's circadian rhythm also influences attention, which is why jet lag can contribute to inattention and resultant memory lapses. Scientists have also discovered that more audience and judgment errors occur at night. Mm. Relax. Everyone has experienced the frustration of trying to recall something, only to have it dance on the edge of memory without quite materialize. The, this phenomenon can be a real problem in retrieving words, and it's a common complaint, especially as you age. Most of the time, a similar word pops into your head instead, which only adds to your frustration. Studies have found that the tip of the tongue phenomenon occurs most often when you try to remember someone's last name, a friend's name, or the name of object. About 50% of the time, you will remember a word in less than a minute. Scientists aren't sure why the tips of the tongue phenomenon occur already, although it may have something to do with an aging retrieval system or metabolic slowdown. These slips occur unpredictably and usually involve words that are rarely used. But there is nothing abnormal about this type of memory lapse. If you are struggling with this problem, understand that the best chance you have of recalling the word is to relax. Instead of wrecking your brain to come up with a word, simply shut up and substitute another word. If you act if, as if the failure to call the word is not um, important, it comes less important psychologically. You can continue to talk about the subject using synonym. Uh, this should trigger association that will help put the forgotten word into context. Often, it will suddenly slide into awareness. If the tip of the tongue phenomenon makes you forget, then you came for when you arrive in a room or a store, try repeating out loud whatever it you want before you arrive at the location where it's uh, to be found. If you say to yourself, I'm going to store to get water and ice cream, you can prevent yourself from losing track of your mission.